Hey, hey, it's time for another Lowland Kids pattern. We're doing the beach romper tutorial this time and I will be doing the button down version. And so with that, we are going to start off with the Henley. Some of the prep work that I already did includes cutting the line indicated down the middle of the front bodice piece, just until the notch, and then taking the two Henley pieces, ironing interfacing on the wrong side of each of them, and then folding them in half longwise. Next, I am placing those Henley pieces right sides together on the right side of the bodice, making sure that the raw edges of the strips are lined up. And then I'm going to sew a straight line down a half an inch from the edge and half an inch um, past the bottom. So I'm marking those spots right now so that I can sew it properly on the sewing machine. After that is complete, it should look a little bit like this. After that is complete, I flipped over to the wrong side so that I could cut an angle down to the bottom. First I marked it so that I made sure when I was going with the scissors it would go well, but you just cut down to that bottom corner where your stitching's ended, being careful not to cut the Henley strips or the actual stitching. So cut out that notch and then I also trimmed the shirt close to the stitches um, being careful not to clip any of the stitching or the Henley strips. It just was a helpful way to reduce some bulk. And I just want to emphasize I'm only trimming the shirt, not any of the Henley pieces. Once that is complete, um, I played around with it to figure out which side I wanted to be on top. And then I placed the Henley strip directly over the other, tucks the extra fabric behind, including that triangle piece underneath. And so then as I lift up the shirt, you should see that triangle piece on top of the Henley pieces. And I'm just kind of trimming my excess threads and then you're going to sew a straight line across the triangle once it's all lined up right across here. And once that's done, then you're going to sew along the out, outer edge, about an eighth of an inch away, along the outer edge of the Henley, down, over, and up. And then in the bottom, make the box with an X. Wow, it's looking so much better already. Um, so the next thing is on the back side to trim or serge any of the excess Henley strips for a clean finish. Um, and after that, it's time to apply the binding. So it's good to leave about an inch off of the edge of the Henley because we're gonna be folding that over later. So I left about one inch, clipped it in place, and then I fold the binding strip in half to find the center and also folded the shirt in half to find the center back, line those up and just find, um, yeah, clip that in place. And then also put the other end on the opposite end, also leaving an inch off the edge. If you're new to binding, you might be surprised that the binding is much shorter than the neckline that's on purpose you just need to stretch the binding a little bit as you go but do not stretch the neckline itself um, the purpose is that it's going to kind of scrunch in so that it doesn't look gapy or anything like that so you're gonna just surge or do a zigzag stitch all the way around and just as you can kind of see how i'm letting it pull slightly so that it makes the fabric just fall straight and the binding match up with it that's how much you'll want to stretch it as you go okay so once it is attached which by the way we did it on the right side of the fabric then now we're going to do the fold over so we fold halfway down to meet up with the raw edge or the stitched edge and then fold over to cover up the stitching and so this is called a double fold binding so just fold halfway down halfway down and then all the way and you'll just put all your clips in place and then take that either to a cover stitch machine or using a twin needle. One mistake people do sometimes is they think that by doing two straight stitches all the way around that's imitating a double needle. Um, it 
doesn't work the same though because that doesn't allow any stretch and those stitches will eventually pop so if you do not have a cover stitch always either do a double needle or a zigzag stitch because it does need to be a stretch stitch and go ahead and take that all the way around so once your binding is done go ahead and fold that excess one inch over tack it down into place just top stitch it over top of there on both sides and then we will trim any excess after that looking great um, and then you can later mark the three or four buttons or snaps that you want to put in place and go ahead and apply them next is sleeves I'm going to fold them in half to find the center point on the sleeve and match that up with the seam on the shoulder and do that for both sleeves um, sometimes I'll also clip on each end um, but I don't do that as often anymore but I do recommend it if this is new to you I'm going to take that over to the serger or you can do a zigzag stitch Yay, we have beautiful sleeves. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna put right sides together and line up the side seams going all the way from the end of the sleeve down the side and we're gonna stitch all the way down there, making sure that the seams match up along the way. Now that the side seams are sewn, we're gonna set this aside and work on the bottoms. So take your two pieces for the bottoms and sew along the crotch seams for the front and the back. And once that's completed, we are going to attach pockets. If you're not doing pockets, you can skip over this part, but I say never skip on pockets. <laughs> so if you um, marked your pieces, then you can go ahead and place your pockets accordingly. If you forgot to mark them, well, you can either make it up or hurry and go find your pattern pieces. Um, but you will want to make sure after attaching all of your pockets, um, I always place the pants right sides together to make sure that the pockets did end up lining up nicely. On this first one, they were off just a little, so I scooted it down to make sure that it was going to line up on both sides. The other one lined up nicely. Um, so whichever way you go, <laughs> make sure you check it before you sew it and then just take it to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch straight stitch going down each pocket and once that's complete you can open up the pocket so that all the right sides are up or down place them right sides together and start pinning everything in place you'll want to make sure that where seams need to line up are good um, the top and bottom of the pant leg are matched up all of those places and you'll ultimately go from the top all the way around the pocket and back down. And additionally, while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and sew the crotch seam. So line up those seams as well and sew that across too. Oh, and if you didn't do pockets, then you'll just be putting the pants right sides together and sewing down the side seams, straight down. <laughs> okay, so we're nearly done. Wasn't that so easy? We just need to hem the bottoms here and then also take your sleeves and hem those. And once that's completed, we're gonna work on the elastic. So you're going to quarter the elastic so that you have it broken up into four equal parts and then match that up with the front center, back center, and the side seams. Um, it's easy with the pants because they all have seams, but for the top, you will need to fold the top in half to find the center front and center back. Um, so we're placing the elastic on the wrong side of the shorts and then we are adding in the shirt to the right side of the shorts so that the top and the bottoms are right sides together and the elastic is on the inside of all that, on the wrong side of the pants. So the order of your little sandwiching should be elastic, bottoms, top, with the top and bottoms right sides together. Line up all of those four spots, and if you need to add some extra pins or clips, you can do that as well. Then you're gonna stretch it as you stitch all the way around so that the elastic is pulled taut and that the fabric is not being stretched at all. Once it's attached, it should look a little like this. It's almost a romper, almost. 
but we're gonna have one last finishing step and that's folding down the elastic and top stitching it in place. So we're gonna be folding the elastic downward towards the bottoms so that it kind of looks like the top is tucked in. It looks really cool, honestly. And I'm gonna give you a little peek. So that's what it looks like pulling up through the pants. But if you go from the top view, it's like it's going straight down. So you're just folding it straight down over the bottoms. And so I recommend going ahead and folding it down and pinning that elastic in place so that as you go to take it to the machine, it doesn't try to flip over on you or anything like that. Also by pinning everything in place, it's helping you prevent your fabric from rippling as you sew. Because as you sew this, you will need to be stretching it as you go and trying to make sure your fabric is laying as flat as possible so that any rippling does not occur. And I stitched this on my cover stitch machine. Um, regardless, whatever machine you use, you do need it to be a stretch stitch so that it goes stretchy with the elastic. So this is how it will look before you stitch it down in place. And when it's done, you've got a cute little romper here. And if you're doing the buttonholes, you can add those in right now and thread your elastic through. And there's another quick look at the elastic in case you need to see how it goes. Um, it is good to also attach your pockets as you go. I didn't do that, but if you want to, you can <laughs> attach it to the elastic part. And then add your buttons, which I did off camera. Sorry, y'all. But here is the finished look. And I really, really love how this turned out. I always love pockets, but I love that this is just a one piece ready to go. And here's my daughter and she loved it too. So I would definitely say that it's a win. And of course I had to make myself a matching one. So here we are having the best time dancing in our backyard. <laughs> I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, but otherwise I hope you have a wonderful day and have fun sewing and we love Lowland kids. <laughs> uh, my fabric was by Trendy Fabrics. If you've ever used them before, I highly recommend it. They were fantastic to work with and they came out with the cutest fabric. So thanks y'all.